2. And if you're able to stand for the reading of the Word of God, we just do it in reverence to God. And I would believe that would be okay. And, and so I want you to see this and read this with me. If you're visiting with us and you don't have a King James Bible, we'd love for you to grab one of those in front of you under the pew. We've got some black ones uh, there. And uh, I love the old black book, praise God. And I've got them in every shade, every color, all thickness, all kinds of small print, big print, little print. I love Bibles, amen, but they all say the same thing. And I thank God for that and the many people that gave their lives so that we could have a Bible. Amen. Lots of folks gave their lives so we could have this word. And so it's a blessing. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 2, the Bible says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart unto understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as hid treasure, as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then, and then only, shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. I want to talk to you about that tonight, about with the wisdom of God. And, and listen, that's what we need. We don't need our wisdom. We don't need what we think. We don't need what we want. We need what God's word says. And to have his wisdom will do great and mighty things for us. But there are some things we'll have to understand to get it. And he stretches it out here. Uh, actually, the whole chapter is just one giant sentence. But I just read to you a whole sentence. And, and God wants to do something. And obtaining wisdom is conditional it's not automatic there are lots of people matter of fact i would almost say most more people than not get saved give their life to the lord and as far as eternal security and as far as salvation is concerned but many of them have not the wisdom of god and and many believers never find the wisdom of god because they don't obey the conditions that are written in the word of god for finding wisdom it requires decisions to be made. And decisions require commitment. And commitment leads to strong personal commitment in a process that God will uh, do something for us and have his wisdom. I want to be wise, but only like God's word says to be wise. I don't want to be a philosopher or an educated uh, uh, person that has, has not God I want to have God's wisdom and see the world like Jesus sees it. And that's what wisdom is, seeing the world like God sees it and understanding the world like God understands. Let's pray. We'll have a quick song, and then we'll get right into the Word of God and preach to you just for a little bit tonight. Father, we love you. And Lord, I do pray, Father, you would be in this. Pray that you would help us and lead us and guide us as we preach the Word of God tonight. May you help us to say what needs to be said. May you... May you speak in the pews tonight to every single person. May they understand uh, that nobody has arrived. Nobody has figured it out that we ought to be seeking your wisdom like silver or like money or like the things that, that we seek after. Father, when we find that, then, then we understand what it's all about. And then we know what you're doing, your judgments, and we understand uh, the, the path that you have for us. But until then, Lord, we, we, have to, we have to seek after it. Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing so long. There is a river of gladness that pours from Emmanuel's veins. This sinner was plunged beneath the flood and got saved. 
Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested and tasted your grace. I was so lost till I fell at the cross. I got saved. Oh, Oh, I I got got saved. saved. I'm I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? The love of God gave me his pardon. The love of God won't let me stay the same. The love of God pulls me up higher. His will is stronger. That's why I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus, how could I want more? I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus, how could I want more? Man, I got the Lord. Let I don't have a form of the Lord. Let I got the the Bible God, Jesus, amen. The one the Bible that with it all put together, where it's all said and done, I got what he is and, and I thank God for that. I thank God I don't have to wonder if I got him or if I got the right one. Well, I wonder around wondering if I got the right doctrine. I got the right doctrine because I've read the whole book. And I don't just pick out a phrase here and there and put it together and say, this is what that means. We put it all together and we find out what it means. I thank the Lord for the incredible word of God. And uh, in our chapter here, in chapter number two, we know that Solomon is writing this, uh, humanly speaking. We know that the word of God was penned by men of God and the Holy Spirit gave them the words to write down. And it's God breathed. It's inspired of God. And, and Solomon loved his child. And he's writing to one of his children. And he says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, if you'll receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understand, yet thou cry after knowledge and lift up the voice of understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. You see, Solomon had a plan for his child, just like we have plans for our children. If our kids will receive what God has for them, God can do something. And, and he wants to give our children wisdom beyond their years. I've met some young preachers uh, that, that were 40 years old. And I would think, man, they, that's unbelievable. Brother Tony Shirley, one of our good friends, I think Brother Tony's 41 years old. But, but he's got wisdom beyond his years. And that's because he applied himself and he, he searched in the Bible and he didn't even go to Bible college. I didn't go to Bible college to, to, to serve the Lord. I went and I'm glad I went and I needed it. But, but he applied his life to it and, and God wants us to have wisdom. He doesn't just want us to be saved and that's it and flutter around and flop around in this Christian life. He wants us to have the wisdom of God to be able to apply ourselves and, and do what God wants us to do. And, and that's why he writes the book. And Proverbs chapter number 2 is probably the best chapter in the whole book of Proverbs. I would say that 100%. Uh, there's a lot of good books, a lot of good chapters, and it's all good. Amen. I like every bit of it. But he had a vision for his son. 
And, and we, we understand this is the Holy Spirit's pen, and so we can look at it and apply it as God speaking to us, even though He was speaking to His Son. And, and, and we can apply it both ways, and we'll get right into it. And I want you to see some things. If you're going to have wisdom from God, there's some requirements for that. And number one, you're just going to have to seek it. You'll have to seek it. And He shows us how. Number one, you've got to be receptive. You've got to hear, you've got, you've got to accept the words from God. And I need, my kids need to accept it from me first and then apply it in their life. And then one day, God's going to blow in on my five-year-old and she's going to understand what she's taught, been taught her whole life and she's going to get the fear of God and understand the reverence of God like Solomon is talking about. We have to accept the words from our parents. We have to accept the word from God. Look what it says in verse number one. He says, my son, if thou wilt receive. And that, that's an easy word to accept it, to bring it in, to carry it away. If you'll carry my words away with you and not just hear them and not just, uh, just, just hear it and say, oh, okay, like a lot of us do, we hear it, but we walk away from it. God says, if you'll carry it away. If you'll fetch it. I like this one. He says, if you will enfold it. That's what the word uh, receive there means, to enfold, to take it, fold it up, and put it in. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable that God says, look, if you will re receive my words, put them in there, seize upon them, take them, win it, keep it, use it, the words. I can do something with you. You have to be receptive. Uh, don't turn there, but James chapter number one. I wrote that down, and, and I want you to understand that we know it. We just heard it. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Receive the engrafted word, the, the word that's already inside of you, and when God speaks to you, Receive it because it'll save you. It'll change your life. The Berean believers in the Bible in Acts chapter number 17, the Bible says that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. Let me invite you, man. You ought to search the scriptures daily. You ought, you ought to get caught up in it. I get caught up in it sometimes. I'll, I'll be reading something and say, wait a minute. And I'll flip over here and, oh, they say, no, I'll get taken on such a trip of greatness that I'll, I'll leave what I was looking at first. I mean, I just keep going and going and going. And there's so much in here that will lead us on paths of righteousness. Number one, you got to be receptive. He said, if thou wert receive my words, then he says this, and hide my commandments with thee. The, the, the neat thing about that hide is, means to hoard to hoard or to reserve or to deny anybody from it. <laughs> to hoard it. You, you, we've seen on TV the movie, the show called Hoarders. They go in their homes and it's just garbage everywhere. They don't throw nothing away. He said, man, why don't you hoard my word? Yeah. If you will hide it, hoard it, receive it, and deny anybody from taking it from you, even yourself. If you'll be receptive to it, hey, if you won't just look at it, if you won't just take a quick peek at it, if you won't just be reading a little bit of it every now and then, if you'll hoard it inside your life, I can do something with you if you'll be receptive. That's why God wants us to be with his word, man. He wants us to dig. Dig in there. Uh, when I used to play uh, baseball, I used to I used to get in that batter's box, and they'd have it all pretty for the first game, before the game starts. I mean, everything would be raked out and... And, and I was usually third or fourth in batting. And I'd get up there, man, and i just dig that thing out. I'm like, let's, I'd hold the, the I'd, I'd tell the ref and uh, the umpire, hold on. And I'd start digging. And I'd dig a little trench down in there. It'd be there all game for me just to go up and put my foot in there. And I'd dig this one back a little bit. And I'd tell, hold on. Hold on, man. I'd dig down. I'd have my spot and I'd be ready. Hey, that's what God's saying. Take the word of God, hide it, dig deep, keep it in you, and do what it says. He says, wisdom is found through recognizing 
the priceless treasures of God's word. It, it, the only way wisdom comes is through this. If I had a book tonight that said, if you read this book, you'll make a million dollars, no doubt about it. Give me that book. I want that book. God, if you give me that book, I will give you half to the church. God, I'll do this. And, hey, man, we got a book that's got a lot of treasure in it. His commandment, studying his word, to store up and to hide the word of God within you. Studying and memorizing. It, it is fun when we say our verses and we throw a piece of candy to somebody in Sunday school. And that's neat and I like that idea. But man, what we're really trying to do is get the word of God in you so when times get tough, you'll say, wait a minute. I remember this verse, and God promised me right here that he could do this, and, and God said he would do this, and, and now I'm not sinning as much against God, and, and now my life's got peace, and, and God says, receive it. Man, if you'll be receptive to God's word, you'll be on your way to wisdom. Look at verse number two. He says, so that thou incline, incline thine ear unto wisdom. That word incline just means to pay attention. So if you'll receive my word and then pay attention to it, doesn't it seem redundant that he keeps using these words? The same words, hearken and hide and receive and incline and apply. Hey, God's not redundant. They all mean something else. And he says, hearken to my word. And man, I'm telling you, if you woke up in the morning and got your game face on like a soldier does before he goes out to battle, like a, like a skydiver does checking his parachute, and you get that book out and you start reading it and say, God, give me something. Man, God will change your life. He's a life-changing God. And it's this word that does it. So that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom. If you receive what I give you and you'll hide it, and, and so that you're inclining your ear unto wisdom, you're, you're in paying attention. And apply thine heart to understanding. You know what that word apply, man? It's, this is just great. It's just a word study in the word of God. It's all I'm doing with you. Apply uh, literally means to stretch out and spread out and, 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 and just, just stretch it out, spread it out, and and bend away from everything else. That's what the word says. Bend away. Stretch it all out in front of you. Incline your ear to it. And then apply. Stretch it out. Think about it. And bend away from everything else. And man, God starts showing up. And then you start having wisdom. And you say stuff like, I can't believe I said that. And I was in the middle of this. And this was happening with my kids. And. I mean, I just knew what to do right there, according to the word. And, and my wife, she was acting up, because normally it's the wife that acts up. And, and, and so my, my wife was, and I knew what to do. The Bible says, husband loves your wife. So I just loved her. Honey, I love you. I, I'm kidding about that. It's normally me that acts up. But, and that's what God wants. You've got to spread it out before you and bend away from everything else. That's the only way you get wisdom. By searching the scriptures, by looking at what God has, by inclining your, uh, 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 your, by your ear unto God's wisdom. What's wisdom? Seeing the world like God sees it. God, help me to think like you, to see like you. Hey, if you do that, you'll become a wise, wise person. That's what we need. He says, apply thine heart to understanding. And understanding is just wisdom, the wisdom of God. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if you cry, that's it, just rigorously getting after it. Lord, I need your knowledge. When's the last time you guys, God, I need something today, Lord. Please, please help me as I read, Lord. You say, well, that seems kind of weird, Brother Burton. It is because nobody's got any wisdom in here. <laughs> Because we don't do it. Now, I know we got people that got some wisdom. I'm, I'm just messing with you on that. But man, what about just hiding it, spreading it out, bending away from everything else and saying, Lord, this is what I need. I need your word. I need your word, Lord. 
Not that is, we've got to be receptive, number one, but number two, we've got to be responsive. Responsive. We've got to make a move. We've got to incline. We have to apply. We have to spread it out before us. We have to cry after God. Lift up our voice for understanding. God, help me today. That's what he wants. And then verse number four, he says, If thou seekest her as silver, love of money is the root of all evil. So if you, if you stop, hey, if, if, <laughs> what would be great is everybody went to work tomorrow and they said, man, we're going to double your pay. Like, woo! Woo! But God says, I can double your wisdom and it'll be better than payday. There's nothing more sweeter than a real relationship with the Lord. I'm not telling you to go after money. I'd love for you to all be rich. But that ain't going to give you what God's word will give you. That ain't going to give you the peace. He says, if thou seekest her as silver, search out, strive. And then it says, this word seekest means to require it. To, to seek it and not only seek it, but, but take nothing less than to get it. It's like seeking, but... You're not quitting until you find it. <laughs> Nothing less. Just require it. No, I, I'm getting it. I, I am getting it. And, and searches for her as hid treasures. Folks, outside under this, this deal here, there is a, 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 I wouldn't even have to put a lot of money out there. There's $50 buried out there. Now, some of you say, well, you know, I'm good. And the, the ones that would say that would be back as soon as everybody left and uh, jump the fence. <laughs> Search as far as hid treasures. I mean, I mean have you seeked God's wisdom and God's understanding? You've got to be receptive. You, you, you've, got to, you've got to receive what God has for you. You've got to be responsive. But seek as, as treasure, you've got to be rigorous. And rigor is just requiring it, after it, and not giving up until you get to it. Seek us for her as hid treasures. That's wisdom. Take your Bibles very quickly and let's turn to Matthew chapter number 6. Okay, you really expected to hear a lot more pages flipping than that, but that's okay. Matthew chapter number 6. And look at what it says in verse number 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So we laugh and giggle about searching for money and wanting money. And, and listen, we all need money, trust me. Everybody needs money to live on. It's a fact. For most, I would assume. But man, we got to be careful not to look for that more than we look for him. And he says, uh, uh, where your heart is, there where your treasure is, there where your heart be also. Man, wherever you treasure in life, that's where your heart is. Lord, I want you. I want to treasure your word. You say, I don't treasure his word, Brother Burton. Why don't you pray and ask God to help you with that? Because the right thing to do is to treasure his word. That is absolutely obvious from the word of God that God would have us to do that. In verse number 24 says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He says, don't seek that treasure. Seek God, because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. 
You see, we can find wisdom by receiving God's holy written word. We can find wisdom by recognizing that it's a priceless treasure, man. It, it, it's priceless, the word of God. We can find wisdom by recognizing uh, and studying the word of God and storing the treasure in our hearts. We can find wisdom by paying attention to God when he speaks. We can find wisdom by yielding our will to God and so we can understand his word. We can find wisdom by praying. We can find wisdom by earnestly, diligently searching for it. And you got to seek God's wisdom. And when you do, look at verse number five. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. You know what you get then? You, you realize it. You realize something that you never could realize until you seek for God's wisdom. That's what he says. Why do people not fear the Lord? Because they've never seeked after God's wisdom. How can a person get saved and really just not want to live for the Lord? Because they've not, they've not grown in the Lord. They've not added these things that Peter talked about. But they're not searching for God. It, folks, when, when I got saved, you know what that lady said to me yesterday? Miss just Jessica said yesterday in her house, the lady that uh, Brother J.R. and, 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 uh, and Brother Eustace went over there, and she got, man, she got born again, man. It was an incredible story. When I went over there, I said, how you doing, Jessica? She goes, I'm doing great, and I am hungry for this. And I'm like, well, okay, good. And, you know, not just, I mean, she was kind of overbearing with that. I thought, well, that's awesome. And she says, it's amazing because the word of God never meant anything to me before, but now it makes so much sense. And you know what that is? When you get God living inside of you, uh, for the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness unto them. Neither can he know them because he's spiritually discerned. You can't get it when you're not saved. And then she says, uh, Pastor, matter of fact, me and Jacob, we want to be what you were talking about. On th uh, uh, we want to be nethonyms. I'm, she wasn't even hearing from me preaching the Nethanim message, the servant message. I thought, you watch a YouTube? She goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, by the way, Thursday, you were on fire, and I want to be trusting in the Lord like that. I like it. Jacob says, yeah, I, I go looking for her. Uh, you know, she, she, she had a patch on. She goes, and I'm trying to quit smoking. I said, I don't care. if you, you do whatever you want. I'm not trying to clean people up. I just bring them to the Lord, and God does whatever he does. Amen. But she, he says, I, she disappears, and I think she's out smoking. I look outside, she's not there. I find her upstairs on the computer watching you preach. You know what she's seeking for? Wisdom. It's an incredible thing. And right out of the gate. And that lady's been through it. I, I, I don't want to get too crazy with you, but I'm just telling you. Do you seek after God's wisdom? Because in verse number five, if you do, he says, you'll realize it. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Then all of a sudden you understand and you reverence God. Wow. Huh. That's incredible. It's like, it's like you become this person that you never knew you were. Because you weren't. And you become a person. You're like, man, I can't believe I even care about that. I can't believe I have the answer to that. Hey, I just told him, Pastor, that this, 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 and this. And I didn't even know where that came from. I know where it came from. You're seeking for God. And God does that. Folks, who wants to be on the team of God? Who wants to do something big for God? Who wants to be spoke to by God? I do. Fear is reverence. And uh, sounds to me like you gotta, to, 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 if you're going to have this, you've got to have to search it out a little bit. That's what he says. He says, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Find just means literally acquire it. Then sh thou shalt. Then shalt thou. That, that sounds, it's real easy. It, that means it will happen if you will do these other things. Receive it, respond to it, and, and get rigorous for it. And then you'll realize it. <laughs> Amen. The knowledge of God, his knowledge, how he thinks. Look at that. Find the knowledge of God. That's what I want. I want the knowledge of God. I, you know, I, I, I'm not interested in, in, in a lot of other things. I, I want to know my wife and my kids, and I want to be with my church, but I want to be with God. And God helps us to realize, verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom. 
Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So he, he, we receive it, then we're responsive to it, and we get rigorous for it, then we realize it, and in verse 6, then he reveals it. Amen. The Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. Hey, God starts speaking when you search for him, when you spread it out, when you bend away, when you acquire it, when you need it, when you search and don't quit till you get it. Then he comes in, moves in, blows in, touches down and gets inside of you and moves in a great way. And then people that never do this, they're like, I can't believe that he, he's acting. He's really not. He doesn't really feel like that. That's because you ain't ever tasted and seen how good he really is. Man, it's a supernatural book. It ain't a book of rules and regulations, man. That thing will make you tap dance. That thing will make you get, get a little bit blown up. Brooklyn came up tonight and said, was happy about singing. And she goes, I am ready to sing. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I looked at Candy. I said, she filled up. But I liked it. Where is Brooklyn? There she was. She didn't get to sing. But she sang a little bit, right? Yeah. Then she got put in the nursery. Poor kid. She was filled up till she got there. <laughs> now she wants to serve in the nursery. She's coming to me already. What else can I do? I said, but Brooklyn, there's something for you to do. Don't worry. Hey, God gives wisdom out of his mouth. You just got to be able to hear the voice of God. When's the last time you heard the voice of God? It's a voice, not, not a literal voice. Go to the hospital if you're hearing voices. I'm talking about, man, you knew God was speaking to you. Got a text from a brother the other day, man. How do you know God's speaking to you? I feel like he's going to take care of me. I feel like he's going to make me very successful. And I feel like he's going to test me a little bit. And I got a little worried with that brother. I said, man, are you hearing voices? He goes, no, laugh out loud. I just feel like God's going to do something. I thought, oh, good. And God is going to do something with that young Christian that God wants to move in. Man, do you feel like, you know, when you get close to God, you start feeling like, man, he wants to do something. It's this wisdom that gets in there. And folks, I would imagine just about everybody experienced it at some point, but just got close to it and moved away from it. Because you know it takes work to get God. Not, not to get him saved, none of that. But you got to, it says you, you got to search for it and not take no for an answer. You got to spread it out and bend away. I like that bend away. You've got to enfold it and put it in you. And that's the only way it works. So he reveals it in verse 6. In verse number 7, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Number 6, you get rich God's way. I ain't T.D. Jakes. I ain't preaching health, wealth, and prosperity to you and telling you you're going to all be rich because you're not. Most of you are going to stay broke. Yeah. No, nah, I'm just kidding. You, you, if you get a job, you don't have to stay broke. Hey, Amen. You work and, until Jesus comes and God blesses it. But you get rich God's way. Well, what's rich? Where do you get rich out of there, Brother Burton? Well, had to kind of mess with it a little bit, but look at verse 7. He layeth up sound wisdom. Why did he say sound wisdom, Brother Paul, and not just wisdom? <laughs> well, let me get to it. He layeth up. God lays up uh, uh, sound wisdom. That word sound means entire, unbroken, and undecayed. He gives you something only he can give you. Sound wisdom that will never fall apart that will never burn up in the fire, that will never go down the, the drain of life when times get tough. Hey, you can take it to the bank with God. It's sound wisdom. Riches God way. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. Who's the righteous? He's talking about a person who is seeking after God's wisdom. That's what he's talking about. He, he wants to do it for all Christians, but this passage here is not just talking about a saved person. He's talking about a person that's seeking after God, laying it out in the morning and saying, I am going to get something here. I have reserved 15 minutes of my life away. God, I pray that you would bind Satan and his demons from me. I pray that you put a hedge of protection around me right now, God, and help me to get something from the word of God. And 
you start reading it. And he says, I lay up sound wisdom for the righteous. Abiding success is that word there, wisdom. Abiding success. That one right there. I, I lay up undecayed, unbreakable, uh, entire, unbroken, abiding success. You know what that means? You're successful and it stays. Oh, that, that's health, wealth, and prosperity. No, no, that's not success. Success ain't money. Success is, is wisdom of God and it abides because he lays it up for you. He does that for the righteous. That's what I want. I want success in the Lord. He says he's a buckler to them that walk uprightly. A shield. Man, he, he shields me. As long as I'm, Lord, you're first, and I'm, and listen to me, I'm not one of those that, I, I, or not all the time, because I, I'm just like anybody else, I fail God, sometimes often fail him. But I do not want to be one of those people that, I'm blessed, I'm too blessed to be stressed, but I don't go to church, I don't read my Bible, well, then you ain't blessed, you got mercy. You ain't walking uprightly. You're just, just not being destroyed because we've got a merciful God that takes all of, all of us live on his mercy. But he says, I'm a buckler. I'm a shield. And I'm holding a shield in case you can't tell. A shield to them that walk uprightly. Man, he wants to shield us. But that only comes if you're receptive, if you're responsive, if you're rigorous. That's what God wants to do. To them that walk uprightly on the right path. The word uprightly means full of integrity. That, that's a tough one in this day and age. Not a lot of people that are full of integrity. Where their word is their bond. Because Jesus made it that way and God says that your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. Man, don't let back on God. He says, I'll be a, I'm a shield to them. Now, you can say, well, I believe God just shields all of us. No, God does. He's merciful to all of us. But we're not talking about mercy now. We're talking about his wisdom. Look at verse 8. He keepeth the paths of judgment. So we see riches, and now we see refuge. What's refuge? God keeping us. Keeping us safe. He, he keepeth the paths of judgment. Keepeth means to protect, to maintain, to conceal, or to keep close like a blockade. I mean, to keep them so close and then put a blockade up. He keepeth me. He keeps the people searching for wisdom and protects them, and it's amazing. Folks, I'm just telling you, man, search up after wisdom like silver. Like, like gold. Get, get after what God wants you to get after. The things of God are more important. Stop worrying about the world. Think about God. Then he says this. And preserveth the way of his saints. He reserves us. He reserves us. He preserves the way of his saints. Hey, guess what I am? I'm one of his saints. Hey, I, I'm not one of the Catholic saints where I, I pray to somebody if I lose a ring or, or something like that. No, no. I'm a real deal, blood-bought, right. born-again right. uh, Christian. Not because of anything I did, because of the mercy he gave and the grace that he gave. I'm nothing because of anything I've done. I just fell at his feet one day and said, God, I'm give up and I need you. So I told Jacob yesterday at his house, Jacob, God just wants, if the police came in here and we were all wanted, you know, we, he, they want us to do They want us to give up. And the Holy Spirit moves into our life and says, well, you give up, and you give up. Yeah. Hey, and, and then God gives in. The word preserveth means to hedge about, guard, protect, reserve. What a blessing for Wisdom. And then in verse 9, we're done. Then thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity and every good path. I made that one. Then, then you're ready. 
Then you got it. Because once you get God's wisdom by searching and spreading and, 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 and not re and requiring that it has to happen, man, then you're ready. Then you're loaded for bear. I know who I'm talking to. That means you have a big gun that you can shoot a bear with. You can't shoot a gun with every kind of bullet, bear with every kind of bullet. If you shoot them with little bullets, the bear's going to get mad and kill you. You want a big bear bullet. <laughs> big bear bullet. And you're ready. Hey, man, I want to be ready with the Lord, but the, it's, a clear, it's clear and plain right here. God started getting a hold of me in these two Proverbs. Man, I've read these Proverbs for 15 years. Many, may, maybe, I mean, maybe thousands of times. And God just says, maybe not thousands, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. And I started thinking, man, you know, he's got something right here. And there's a lot of ifs. My son, if thou wilt. Verse 3, if thou criest. Verse 4, if thou seekest. Verse 5, then shalt thou understand. And what are you going to understand? Everything he just gave us in the word of God. What are you searching for tonight? Are you willing to put all that on the back burner and search for him? Because that's what he wants. And that's a good way to end a great Sunday in the house of God. Is by saying, Lord, I'm going to search for you this week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spread it out and I'm going to search for you. And, and you may not want them, but my outlines don't make a lot of sense to most people, but I got all those words I looked up right on that outline. You can look at them and see what they all mean. Or I can help you to find them on a, very simply. You just got to study the show, study the word of God. It's a magnifying glass that God gives us to, to study it. And it opens up to us and then we're like, I, I don't want to put Kenta on the spot, but on Facebook she always says, I need to get God. I need to spend time in my Bible with God. I need to be close to God. All her Facebook posts say that. You know what she is? She's searching for God's wisdom. That's us. Or it's supposed to be us. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads bowed, eyes.